So, Call of Duty, you did it again. We have yet another outlandish anti-militaristic skin in a game, and the fans simply are not happy. Welcome to today's video. Nicki Minaj got a crossover skin in COD, and for anyone clicking on this video that's here for Nicki Minaj herself and not COD, for you, non-gamers, a skin is what we call a player model within a video game. It's not literal skin. This right here is a skin. So is this, and so is this. So today, when you hear me talking about Nicki herself, no one's talking about about her real life skin, nor are we criticizing the real life person herself. The reason this disclaimer is here is because I brought this video game criticism over to Twitter X, and people over there just have not taken a chill pill from the political realm. With that said, we're gonna discuss the massive backlash around this skin and bundle in general, plus what Call of Duty, Activision, the studios developing these games should pursue going forward. I love the COD franchise, it's just stuff like this that really makes my eyes bleed. Starting it off with the new Operator Bundle Showcase on the Call of Duty YouTube channel, this video got 5,000 likes. I mean, congrats, but you also see here, we got 17,000 dislikes. Ouch. Yeah, that's a bad ratio. Over two thirds of the ratings are dislikes on a celebrity bundle. And in comparison to other Modern Warfare 2 Operator bundles, the Samurai X Modern Soldier got an even 13, 13,000 split. I mean, it doesn't look anything like modern uniforms. The Neymar, Paul, and Messi bundles showcase got a positive 4,000 v 1,000 division. Yeah, these are soccer players, but I personally like that they had a military theme. You also got a 4 to 1,000 ratio on the military themed Santa Claus skin too. It was liked by the community. Oh, but here, look at this. The TMNT Shredder got a 5,000 likes to nearly 8,000 dislike ratio. <laughs> I mean, understandable again, it's just like the PlayStation exclusive Samurai skin. They don't really fit the theme that well. Black Cell, the futuristic Battle Pass Operator Showcase got a whopping 8,000 likes to 18,000 dislike ratio. The Kevin Durant skin got a showcase with a horrible 3 to 14,000 like to dislike ratio. I kind of like that skin. It's very Call of Duty themed, but I do remember when this showcase dropped, the COD community was very fed up with how uncod like the game was becoming with very minimal 6v6 content. Why were we getting yet another random sports crossover? This led us to kinda hoping for some modernized uplink game mode with this basketball skin. Obviously that would have been very fitting. Instead of a futuristic ball being thrown around into a floating hologram orb, we could have thrown a boot camp basketball into a hoop. But unfortunately Activision was releasing him for the dough. No thought was put in for the players. The boys showcase seemed to be Liked, but that dislike number was still pretty high. However, they are skins from a very popular superhero show, so it is understandable. Snoop Dogg's was a 6 to a 7.5, and, and his skin was just a weed outfit with lots of gold. Pretty even split, to be honest. And finally, here we are with Nikki's 5 to 17,000 ratio. She doesn't exactly have a militarized skin, uh, at all. <laughs> it looks like they just told her to get scanned one day and in whatever outfit she wants, and that's what they put into COD. A sparkly, skin tight fashion model jump suit was what they chose. Her hair is probably the most noticeable in game. Like, COD devs spent a long time on this new engine, and I remember the one thing that they really tried to perfect was the way capes and other types of loose fabric float around in the air. How they sway and all that sort of stuff. That sort of development is now being used on long, luscious bubblegum hair. Ah, uh, and yes, the outfit is also very noticeable, as it is extremely reflective. Update! So, it's also been another day, and the views just keep going up. Fluff it. It's been two weeks since I started writing this script, and the likes are now sitting at 7.1 thousand, while the dislikes are sitting at 27 thousand. God damn, a 20 thousand difference. Jesus, what happened here? But yeah, I have some easy fixes that I'd love to discuss just before we jump into my favorite comments on this YouTube video comment section, so let's just dive into that first. MW3 is gonna have this whole carryover feature, so be prepared to run into stuff like Binky over here when that game launches. If you're a fan of the new hand, Zimmer music pack bundle? Uh, well you may be reliving some of the nostalgia through one of the five senses, but visually you won't be anywhere near there. <laughs> sure, MW2 has some camos from the OG CODs, like this nice autumn camo, but apparently they aren't transferring over to MW3 weapons for god knows what reason either. <laughs> Big Sag. As for the other three senses, I'm not sure you really want to smell like the good old days. But yeah, if you were one of those OGs, maybe pick up a bag of Cheetos and a can of Mountain Dew for your taste buds to celebrate on launch day. I'm 
I'm still excited for MW3. I'd love a good party, and heck, my next video is gonna be about why we should buy MW3. <laughs> yeah, despite all the backlash. I hope y'all stick around to listen for that one. Moving on! Let's fix the visual bug with a visual makeover! Hell yeah! If you saw the thumbnail of this video, you know exactly where I'm going with this. Cosmetic filters! I cannot preach them enough. Listen, a cosmetic filter is something that only affects yourself. Stuff like the pink Nicki Minaj skin eradicated, completely gone off your screen. Instead, each operator added to COD should have a default military outfit. When this casual milsim cosmetic filter is applied, that's what you'll turn into if your current skin doesn't match the casual milsim category. Now, I've made a whole video on my reasoning for why COD needs a cosmetic filter already. I'll have a link to it at the end of this video, but I wanted to get into the whole devil's advocate reasoning here. I covered it a little bit in my last video too, but not enough. I said that your reasoning is a lost cause if you think Activision wouldn't add an immersive filter because it doesn't advertise new cosmetics. It's a lost cause because the only reason people would want to use this filter is to not see new cosmetics that don't fit the military casual theme. You'd still see new cosmetics like the Season 5 Battle Pass Captain Price and the MW3 pre-order skin, which funny enough isn't animated in the promotional image here on screen. No slow moving squiggles! Like if your cosmetic filter was enabled, you'd specifically be seeing this <laughs> variant of soap in the game. The counter devil's advocate that's been brought to my attention has just been that it doesn't matter. Exposure is exposure, it's always a potential sale. And I guess I kind of agree. Like yes, I have seen YouTubers that once did value an immersive theme buy into the wacky cosmetics. Case in point, the one boom and the light armored vehement skin in Vanguard last year. Case in point, me and the anime Mara skin back in Modern Warfare 2019. A common trend I've seen each year now has been the launch of a new COD with months of cosmetics that stay true to that game's theme. But after that, they start getting a little bit more and more wild. To the point by the end of each game's main life cycle, they drop an advanced, infinite VR warfare anime waifu into a World War II game. Yes, a World War II game. And along the way, we as the players see the skins progressively get more and more complex. And at a certain point, we see a cool skin, we look at the game's current state, and sometimes we break and give in for something that just looks cool. I think it's a very manipulative strategy. They do this every year. During Vanguard, I bought this armored maiden skin for Constance on the 2nd of February. The theme of the game was still World War II to my knowledge, and I thought this looked extremely badass at the time. February 22nd came along, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I believe this was the major skin that changed the game forever. Ugly bastard should have been this guy's name, cause goddamn, what septic tank did this guy crawl out of? That eventually opened the doors to my wallet purchasing the gate security skin for Constance on May 21st. The uh, evolution of the skin complexity went up, and honestly, I just don't even want to touch the Armored Maiden skin anymore. It just became outdated. I'd rather run a steampunk World War II skin any day over a more era-appropriate skin here. It just doesn't have that flair to it anymore. Legit, if you told me this was a default skin, I would believe you at this point. And that's just what happens when they keep going more and more wild. The more crazy see the new cosmetics, the less appealing the old ones look. Like, look at this cat skin and then compare it to any other generic soldier. Like, literally, they become generic because of this cat skin. So yeah, Modern Warfare 3 has some competition with Modern Warfare 2 this year. If the skins aren't more insane at launch, I don't think the cash cows or the money wheels will spend another dime. Unless uh, Activision starts going the pay-to-win route with multiplayer. <laughs> God, so. Blame Truth, believe it or not, pointed out how these new perks are gear, and how gear could essentially become tied to new shop skins. And from there, they're just tied to DMZ bonus effects. Like imagine Infinite Warfare's weapon variant bonus effects tied to character gear instead. It's really not that outlandish considering DMZ. The moment we don't call out DMZ's pay to win BS is the moment we open the doors to the same sort of stuff in multiplayer again. Some refuse to call DMZ's bonuses pay to win, but I bet if you included the same stuff in multiplayer, people would go ballistic. I mean, a UEV is a small streak. It's not like the point of going on a streak is to be rewarded right? Like why not give people a free streak in multiplayer too? It's just one. It's not like it goes against the entire point of the mode or anything. Like bro, pull out a launcher and shoot those paid streaks out of the air. It isn't that hard. You see? You see what I mean? Do we need COD water down that much? <laughs> like damn, at this point why not put pack-a-punched weapons into the shop? Maybe guarantee a zombies perk off the bat too while you're at it. But yeah, there's a lot of gear coming out for the perks. Maybe a fast hands glove will give you a 30% faster reload speed. Meanwhile, the shop 
glove gives you a 32% faster reload speed. And then throughout the year, they just keep going higher and higher up. 33, 34, 35. You know what I mean? Ugh. It pains me thinking about it. So let's get back into my final point about the cosmetic filter, shall we? Before we do that, I just want to say that that was the worst case scenario. So don't worry about it too much. <laughs> I mean, it's a possibility. They could pull some shiz like that with pay to win gear. We didn't think a worse supply drop system would come to COD after World War II, but uh, they had some big balls in BO4. I mean, I guess they were banking on conditioning people with consumer friendly systems and then slowly easing us back into the pay to win supply drops. Like, hey, why don't we give you a free battle pass and then slip some pay to win supply drops in there and bundle them together, yeah? No. One does not balance out the other, and I fear that they're kind of conditioning the community into thinking that COD is about wacky and zany skins too, but yes. Back to my final point. I mentioned how indeed exposure can sell you on new skins, but at the same time, I've already been fudged over in so many instances that I'm not falling victim to that system again. I'm just keeping my Modern Warfare 2 ghillie suits and sticking with them for the rest of MW 2023, and maybe the free Battle Pass skins here and there. I think the only way though that they get me to buy another skin from the shop is if they add this cosmetic filter. Why? creating more skins within the boundaries of casual military outfits. Which brings us to my point on personalized apps. Google does it, Twitter or X does it, and heck, YouTube does it too. We're surrounded by personalized ads everywhere online for a good reason. If ads are personalized to suit your interests, you're theoretically more likely to look into those ads themselves. If I'm into Batman or other edgy stuff, I'm most likely not gonna click on an ad selling me Barbies or baby toys. <laughs> but if you slid more Batman or perhaps a little bit Deadpool into my line of sight, then you may get my attention. So so I argue, with a military casual cosmetic filter in COD, you could start a whole new personalized ads movement to still make money on folks that just want COD to look like COD, not a circus. Frankly, that person would be me. And hey, I'm a big fan of most uh, genres. I love a good clown aesthetic. I'm watching the One Piece live action right now and it is just gorgeous. Good job on Buggy, guys. <laughs> but I just don't care for when you start mixing that stuff in a franchise that never had it to begin with. Like, let's say you had a new Halo game and nobody's wearing a Halo suit anymore. Like you got Anakin Skywalker, fucking John Wick, and then you have them in these multiplayer maps that are like lore accurate to the campaign and they're just jumping around in space without a helmet. If this this was Gmod or VR Chat. Well, anything goes at that point, but it ain't COD. As a lover of every outfit being military all the way to military casual wear, I have no real incentive to buy another realistic skin in Modern Warfare 2023. I mean, unless it perhaps gives us an in-game advantage, like a Darkest Night Rose skin. Unless that happens, I don't see a point. Like, hey, I'd love to see the exact opposite of a Nicki Minaj skin. You wanna stand out and be seen? Well, that's fine if I can just be more hidden. Like, bring it on, amigo. You wanna ruin the aesthetic for me? Well, I may as well do it right back with something objectively better. I'm not invisible, but upon the principle of you fuck with me, I fuck with you. Get absolutely wrecked. <laughs> it is a little funny though, the way COD has changed along with the mentality of the average player. Back in the somewhat older to medium days of COD, we used to go for mastery rewards that stood out to show that we were putting ourselves at a disadvantage by standing out. However, while still coming out on top of the leaderboards. Case in point, Black Ops 3 Zero Gear. Instantly recognizable and very visible. Infinite Warfare Gold Gear, Diamond Gear, Solar Gear, and Black Sky Gear. Heck, there was also Mission Team Gear that was pretty fun to go for, and it was themed towards the faction you showed your allegiance to. Here's my Blood Anvil Gear for the Merc Rig, and also the FTL Rigs. World War II. All the Master Prestige Intervals had new prestigious skins to unlock. Vanguard last year also had some. But what do we have this year? Oh, wait. Wasn't that Black Sky Gear from Infinite War- Yeah. Okay, so now you can just buy the old master gear to stand out without any skill behind that reward. Nice, you spent some money to make yourself feel like you're on par with the actual legends. Round of applause. And with that, let's get into my favorite comments to end the video off with. Craig says this franchise, the reboots in particular, went from looking like something you would see on the news to something you would see in Cartoon Network. <laughs> For real, Craig the Brute. It's funny because you look at the game's cover and then you go into the game and it's a totally different aesthetic. It's one of the clearest cash grabs I can think of in console gaming. Matthew Sanchez quotes, We want to create an immersive remake of modern warfare and have accurate guns, maps, and the environments of everything to be realistic. Meanwhile, you can also play as Nicki Minaj. 
god. <laughs> yeah, just go around all these unique locations that they've made that are supposed to like simulate real life locations, right? Some of them are actually like based on real locations like museum and this uh, raceway map. But no, 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 go on ahead. Be Nicki Minaj, the, the girl in the dress. <laughs> also, I did reply to that saying, yeah, extremely disappointed. And I got a reply to my comment saying, at Mansuki, if you don't like it, don't buy it. <laughs> Which is just the funniest thing ever. And look at that, some people are actually starting to get it now. Content Crypt says, don't like it, don't buy it. Doesn't solve the fact that you'll see multiple Nicki Minaj's every multiplayer match. Exactly, that's what I'm saying, man. Thank you. And he's got four likes on there, how nice. Then you got this other guy with the name I cannot pronounce. <laughs> I have no clue how you pronounce that. But he's like, I hate when people cry over getting skins dropped, like it hurts like gameplay or something. Hee hee hee, stop crying and get your default. <sighs> it's really weird because like no one's talking about gameplay. It's a compartmentalized sort of thing. I have a video that I was going to make on the shipment, right? And sort of Jeb's take on it. He was reading a tweet that was like, is shipment hurting COD multiplayer? And Jeb was like, hell no, it's Warzone. And it's like, okay, so you're going to tell people to stop talking about shipment hurting multiplayer because it, Warzone's taking away support too? Like, damn bro, by that logic, we shouldn't be complaining about anything in multiplayer because Warzone's the problem. Like, it's just so weird. Like, multiplayer is fine as it is right now. It's like, it could get the support it needs. Roughly, we still get the same amount of maps every year. It's not like it's that bad. I don't think uh, focusing our hate on Warzone would really stop shipment from existing in the first place. So I, I don't get that logic. But yeah, no one's saying it hurts gameplay. Just stop making shiz up. It's like you can't even have a conversation about things that, you're, that you find important. I, I don't think gameplay is a huge problem with Modern Warfare 2. So why would I be talking about it? Unless it's shipment, of course but you know you get my point <laughs> Activision thanking YouTube for getting rid of how many dislikes this video is gonna get. This was around like three days after the video came out, so you got here at the very start, 9.7k dislikes, 13k, 14k, and then the next day you had 16k, and the day after that you had 20k. Like, goddamn, that's that was four days in. And now it's at 27. <laughs> the 42 Project says, Man, it hurts seeing a franchise dive off a cliff for greed. Indeed, man, indeed. COD really shouldn't be a, a game about crossovers. I, I don't know why people really defend it so much. The only reason I say stuff like, hey, bring John Wick over to the game as a crossover is not to do with me wanting to buy John Wick at all. It's to do with me saying, if we get a crossover, just do John Wick, do something that matches COD. But you got other people out there that are like, hey, bring Rick and Morty over to COD. Uh, <laughs> It's just weird. I feel like that is what you call a shill, but like, here, let me read you guys the definition so I'm not just saying like, shill, shill, shill this, shill that, uh, shill, ha, 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 ha. I think it's actually important that you guys know the understanding of what a shill is so that I'm not like spouting something like that's considered a, a word that's like a dog whistle that I'm part of a certain extremist group, like, I don't know, Blame Truth or something like that. <laughs> Sorry, Blame Truth. But he, he does kind of get a little bit out there, you know? At least in the cod sphere. But yes, a uh, shill, an accomplice of a hawker, gambler, or swindler who acts as an enthusiastic customer to entice or encourage others. And as an example here, we have, I used to be a shill at a Reno gambling club. In COD terms, that'd be someone who's like, yeah, supply jobs were so good, man. You gotta, we gotta go back to supply jobs, man. They were so good for the consumers. It's like, no. <laughs> when you're gambling, the odds are always against you. That's just how it works. And I, I think if Kai even had to do that now, at this point, they'd have to like label what your chances are of getting certain rarities, which is already still scummy. The house always wins, guys. If they're not making enough money, they're gonna make it harder to unlock the stuff you want. That's exactly why I say all the time that we need to go back to the collection system or incorporate that collection system into the current shop system. Collections kind of coexisted uh, alongside supply drops. So like if you had a supply drop opening, you got like three items from it, they would go into your collection and if you got like duplicates of those sort of items it'd give you a lot of salvage and you could spend that salvage on the collections themselves and that would in turn give you more duplicates that you can spend on more collections the point is you could still get that like thrill from opening supply drops and getting a cool item while still going for like stuff that you want like you could straight up go for anything that you wanted in the game a direct pathway to get to anything that you want is always going to be better than getting random shiz i had a conversation with uh, gamer central the other day about but why he uh, didn't like collections and apparently the reason was that because like collections require you to get items that you don't want but I feel like that kind of misses the purpose of the collection system when you compare it to the supply drop system that's giving you random stuff that you don't want common rewards and supply drops are gonna be common and you're gonna get duplicates of it all the time but with collections yeah there's some common stuff but that all leads up to the thing that you want it's kind of like the same as a skill tree you unlock the lower tier stuff and you work your way up which is why I think collections would actually integrate into this 
like shop system perfectly. If you want to buy the bundle, there you go. If you want to just rack up your salvage points by doing like in-game challenges or something, well, you can do that way too. The more options, the better. So hey, give me a cosmetic filter. I'll be happy. You'll be happy if you don't want to use it. And Activision will be happy too because they'll give me personalized ads while you can just see everything you want. This video was about compromise, so there you go. There's my compromise. I hope you enjoyed. Smash a like button, pretty please. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.